A life spent sailing the briny deep can lead to breathtaking discovery and starvation fueled madness in the top down exploration of Sunless Sea. Set in the foreboding darkness of a vast underground sea called the Untersee, you play a ship's captain who must chart its mysterious inky black waters. Developer Fail Better Games describes Sunless Sea as a 2D nautical roguelike, but I don't think that's a great description for what is quite a peculiar and unique game. For starters, there's the irresistible pull of steering your ship into the unknown. You'll face monsters, pirates, and strange random events. You'll discover ominous islands and looming landmarks. Meet odd characters, and slowly start to build a story as you accept quests and deliver cargo between mysterious ports that you've discovered. At the heart of this is a choose-your-own-adventure style of interactive fiction that has a delicious literary quality to it. It evokes the work of authors like H.G. Wells and H.P. Lovecraft, weaving together strange and eerie tales through verbose descriptions and dialogue. You get to create your captain's backstory and choose a life goal to pursue, such as finding your father's lost remains. All throughout your Salty Sea career, the game places decisions in front of you. Some clear, some cryptic, but usually multiple, multiple options. A lot of the time your options are locked because you don't yet meet the requirements, such as having a particular item in your ship's cargo. Hex, it's so intriguing trying to unlock these little threads. Yeah, I love how much choice there is and how some carry a huge risk of failure. Sometimes your only option is to just sail away and then come back when more of the pieces have fallen into place. But your time at sea is fraught with risk too, because you're always low on fuel and supplies. The Untersee is not a friendly place, but it is oh so alluring. <laughs> So often I knew I was going to run out of fuel, but I couldn't resist pushing on into the darkness in the hope of making a fascinating new discovery. Yeah, at one point I was out in the middle of nowhere and I ran out of food, so I opted to eat a crew member. And it actually opened up these creepy cannibal options in future quests, which was pretty cool. I'm tainted, Bajo. Tainted by the taste of sweet flesh. Hey, whatever gets you back to port, I say. <laughs> if you do get stranded, though, all hope is not lost. You can attract attention with a flare, appease mysterious gods, or burn what's left of your food for a bit of fuel. But more often than not, you go down with your ship. And then there are the giant sharks to worry about. The ship combat is pretty basic, but I still found it fun. You just wait for your deck weapon to charge up and get a lock on before firing. Maneuvering and good positioning is crucial. You always find yourself in two minds about wasting fuel on a fight, but there is of course the lure of plunder. I like the decision process. Like sometimes I'd go full steam ahead to get away from an enemy encounter. But then you run the risk of your engine exploding and the ship catching on fire. <laughs> and it's permadeath. But at least your next captain is an heir or an acquaintance. So you can pass on a legacy or some perks, like your current sea chart, to make the next run a bit easier. I really liked that. I thought it takes some of the sting out of death. Yeah, and different playthroughs result in a different mix of crew members too. And they all have their own weird subquests to pursue if you're willing to deviate from your own course of action. Another thing to contend with in the Untersee is an accumulating sense of terror. This builds the longer you're away from land, or if you sail with your light off, which you might do to avoid the attention of sea monsters. Or even if a quest decision takes a spooky turn. Your terror is always building, and it can lead to mutiny or madness. Yeah, I thought that was a clever mechanic, and it adds to the creepy atmosphere. Yeah, and this game is full of weird consequences, isn't it? Each island you discover has its own bizarre story thread to explore, and you can never predict the outcome. Yeah, and those tales actually become currency. All your encounters earn you fragments, and you need a certain number of fragments to form secrets. And these can be traded. I think it's a lovely idea that your seafaring tales become this valuable commodity that you can use to earn influence. There's a ton of good ideas in this game, isn't there? But I just found the whole thing so slow. Like, go make a cup of tea and come back slow. <laughs>
The ship you start out with pups along at a very gentle pace, and it feels like a huge grind to buy a better engine or weapon upgrades, let alone trade for a superior vessel. Hex, I found it ponderous. Well, it did take me a few hours of play before I really started to get this game, Barjo, but once I did, I was hooked. Like a siren song calling me back to my PC. I did find it frustrating that every time you create a new captain, you effectively have to restart the narrative from the beginning. So you end up retracing those same quests over and over in the hope of getting just a fraction further. Yeah, I know, but it does get easier each time. You start to learn where all the ports are and where the little storylines go. And I found that there were enough random elements to keep it surprising. What really makes this work so well for me is just the quality of the writing. It's just so imaginative and it creates such a rich atmosphere. Even those little log entries off to the side are great. Luminescent beasts like eyeless dolphins play in your wake. I suspect that not everyone will have the patience for all of this required reading though. Yeah, it's pretty dense. After a while I started skimming. Well, it's rewarding if you have the patience for it. I admire this game's originality. I think it's worth two and a half out of five stars. I thought it was beautifully crafted. I'm giving it four. And now it's time for the news with Goose.